Hey everyone, two major news stories to come out of America this week, leaving President Trump happier than the time he found a loophole, saying that he didn't actually have to hire any of the idiots who went in his TV game show. The first main story was the acquittal in the Senate impeachment trial, much as that result was never really in any doubt. I've seen romantic comedies with more twists and suspense, joking of course because I don't watch Richard Curtis films. At no point though did anyone expect Adam Schiff to turn around like Columbo, say one more thing and pull out a surprise cassette recording. There was never any risk of Perry Mason walking in with a crumpled photograph, and Angela Lansbury from Murder, she wrote, lives in Maine, not DC. To this day, there still hasn't been any evidence provided to substantiate any of the claims made by the House Democrats. And whilst it is true that no witnesses were called to this trial, that is in equal part due to the Democrats not being willing to cut a deal that would have seen their folk called up as well. Not least Joe Biden, who went on camera a couple of years ago boasting about how he'd cut Ukrainian aid in order to get a prosecutor fired. The same thing, by the way, that President Trump is now alleged to have done. The whole thing became politicised when the House insisted on closed-door hearings, and so with no public reporting, partisan lines were drawn down the middle, and any attempt to impeach the president was always bound to fall apart faster than one of Prince Andrew's many wild and elaborate excuses. The second part of the story was the Iowa caucus, an event this week in which a crowd of people wanting to run against the president hold a popularity contest in Iowa. It's already pretty contentious, given that it's not really representative of the US demographics these days. It's a small rural state in the Midwest, and it's lucky, frankly, that the number of registered voters now outweighs the number of candidates, given that the scores of potential contenders has finally narrowed down to about half a dozen. Nonetheless, this year was an unmitigated disaster of epic and hilarious proportions. As a smartphone app designed to count the votes broke, there was no backup, and still nobody really knows what the result actually was. All, of course, claimed that they'd won, and if the Democrats were trying to avoid accusations of political correctness gone mad, the vote resembled one of those primary school nonsense sporting events where everyone has declared the winner. The person that came out of it best was probably Michael Bloomberg, who chose to stay away as far from possible and focus on the upcoming polls in New Hampshire and South Carolina. Nonetheless, it made the party look about as professional and organised as one of those videos where people hold a fist fight outside of a Walmart to see who gets to go in first. All part and parcel of the comedy of errors, I suppose. After all, they only have a few months to decide which of them gets to embarrassingly lose to the president come November. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.